Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm an e-learning evangelist here with e-learning brothers. Today we're going to be talking about safety training with customizable courseware. This webinar will be recorded. We'll send a copy of it out to everyone shortly after the webinar. We're also going to post the recording on our website uh, through the blog later in the week. So if you have to check out or, or need to watch this again in the future, you can find it at those two locations. If you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer questions in the questions panel. It looks like a few of you have already found that. So uh, please do send us your questions. We're happy to answer those as we can. If we can't get to your question, we'll do our best to continue the conversation after the webinar, uh, either in an email or in the webinar recap later in the week. To talk to us about safety training and customizable courseware, we have Chris Willis, our senior project, project manager, and Troy Hackworth, a safety consultant and founder of Safety Points with us today. Thank you both of you for joining us. We're excited to hear what you have to say. But uh, before we dive in, just so you know, one of the things that we like to do after the webinar is try to follow up as soon as possible. Sometimes it's just to get feedback. Most of the time we would like to touch base and find out if anybody has some uh, questions that need one-on-one -on -one clarification um, after the fact. And also we're going to be giving everyone in attendance a free eLearning Brothers account. If you don't already have one, you'll get uh, uh, a new account that's for our free library. There's lots of assets in there. There's even a uh, small customizable courseware course in there that you can take a look at, dig through, and, and try that out. So you can look forward to that. All right, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to you, Chris. Thanks, Andrew, and, and thank you, Troy, for being here. It's uh, my pleasure to have you here today. And uh, before we get started, let's find out who we have on the call. I always like to help tailor the conversation and help help Troy as well in, in picking answers that are meaningful to you. So we have a little poll here and I'd like to know if you would, what's your role in safety training? Are you an instructional designer or trainer? Um, perhaps you're a developer or um, we'd love to know if you're in safety or compliance. Um, maybe you're with the business or HR and uh, if we don't have you listed there, uh, use that questions panel and let us know who you are. All right, so those results are coming in. You guys can go ahead and just click right on the screen there uh, to vote. A uh, good chunk of you had already voted early. Early results show that we do have a lot of designer, trainer, learning managers here in our audience. I'll give you guys about five more seconds to vote. Um, so if you're interested in doing so, please do so now. And here's those results, Chris. So 52% of our audience, instructional designer, trainer, learning manager. 30% uh, are e-learning developers. 11% are in business or HR. 7% uh, safety and compliance. Um, and we did get a few in the other section, uh, e-learning developer, instructional designer, and safety and compliance all tagged together. So it looks like the majority of our, our others had a hard time just picking one. Awesome. So you guys who um, have to do everything, you're going to love customizable courseware if you're not familiar with it. Um, for those of you who are working with SMEs and within your organization who have to do the, the training and, and develop it, um, you're going to also love working with customizable courseware. We have some things to uh, make you turn your safety training into rock star learning. So uh, without further ado, we'll jump into that a little bit here. Um, so to get us all in the right kind of frame of mind, use that questions panel again. And what comes to mind when you think of safety, especially workplace safety? We're gonna focus on workplace safety, but safety in general, what comes to mind when you think of safety? Um, Andrew will kind of read off some of the answers he's getting there. Here's a great one, mandatory. Oh, yeah, Tr yes, definitely. Uh, we've got OSHA training, injury prevention, annual training, compliance training, lifting correctly, uh, that it's boring. Uh, <laughs> okay, there's a lot of borings. Boring is a popular one here. Um, that it can happen to you. Uh, employees going home safely. Um, don't get injured, safety first, PPE, uh, going home safely at the end of your shift, field workers, um, and, and more of the same. Common sense for those who lack it, safety training. 
Troy, what do you think of when you think of safety training? What are those words triggering for you? Uh, basically, I've been in this business for about 20 years, and it's a, it's a myriad of tasks that have to be accomplished for a company to be successful and for the, the employees to be successful. If they can go home safe and healthy as they came to the job, then we're successful that day. But if someone gets hurt that day, it doesn't just affect that person. It affects the entire organization. It affects all the people that work that day. I mean, and then you have the, you know, the losses and all the other things that go on. There's a, there's a big ripple effect. Uh, and I experienced this firsthand when you get injured on the job, but if it's severe enough, it affects your family, it affects your loved ones, it affects your company, and then it's going to affect you the rest of your life. And, and that's what it means to me is let's help people avoid getting hurt. And by doing that, we'll be successful and uh, everybody comes out on top. Awesome. We're going to dig into that a little bit deeper here and, and, and as we go. So we have three points of agenda today that we're going to cover. We're going to talk to Troy a little bit more and hear more of his story and why safety training is so important to him. Then I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, eLearning Brothers Safety Customizable Courseware and what what how we package it up and what you get. And then we'll go back to Troy and he's going to talk about our five, first five safety titles and give you a little bit about the business case for each one of those. So back to you, Troy, we'll hop back in here and tell us about, you had a very personal experience on oh. the job that, oh, yeah. and, and, and safety training is very personal. To you. Talk to us <laughs> yeah, talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, no, uh, when uh, I was younger, I worked in the coal mines in eastern Kentucky, and uh, I mean, OSHA, Emshaw, and all that was started in about 1969, Richard Nixon, that era. But safety was unheard of. I mean, I uh, my first job was to drive a rock truck up and down a mountain, fully loaded, and I had about uh, 15 minutes of training during the day on how to do it. And uh, I was in a brand new truck and it was in the daytime and they said, oh, you're great. You know how to do this. So I get to the job and I'm to drive at night. They get me in an old truck that I know that is falling apart. I mean, it's just terrible. And uh, I make a long story short, I ran off a, it, it ran off a cliff. The brakes went out, the electrically, it was an electro hall and everything ran off an electric generator and it went off the mountain. I, I bailed out and it crushed my legs. And uh, eventually after three years, you know, I watched my parents go through a lot. I watched my family go through a lot and they didn't, and back then they didn't give you any, uh, well, uh, somebody said, God, you should have got hurt in California. You could have retired, but I got hurt in Kentucky. And you, you don't get anything, you know, you don't get paid much, uh, no workers comp at the time. I mean, it was very, it was a bad, bad situation. So eventually I ended up getting into safety training and I found myself a home because I understood it from an intimate standpoint, rather than a person sitting behind a desk trying to write regs, We're reading a reg, an OSHA reg or an EPA standard and saying, I need to make a course on this. You know, they don't understand where the rubber meets the road. And that's the, and that's what safety is all about, is if it if they it's not simple enough, is it's not good enough for the individual trainee to understand and get benefit from, you're not a successful, you're not successful in safety. And when I first started, all the safety trainers and all the people in safety were old hands. Nobody had a degree in this at a college. I mean, Murray Strait University in Kentucky was the only one for years that had it. Now, everybody in every university has a safety program. So it's changed a lot. But at the same time, you got to be careful because they're, you're losing touch with a lot of the intimacy of the safety program. What I'm talking about there, you get a guy that's 
in a classroom. He lives in a perfect environment. Then when he gets a job in the field, and I had this happen with a uh, company that I was working that did directional drilling. And I told the young man, I said, your problem is you're not going to the field. You're sitting in your office trying to do safety. You're thinking everybody's in a perfect world out there, but on that site that day, three pieces of equipment aren't running right. One's broken down. It rained last night. We got two feet of mud and we're trying to get the job done. Now, if you're sitting in your office, you don't see that situation. So you don't act appropriately. And that's one of the reasons the guys don't like you. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> you, you need to show up on the job side, guys, or you, you're going to have a real problem. But, you know, little things like that you learn over time. You don't get those from, uh, you know, sitting behind a desk. You actually get those from going out and hanging out and working out there and seeing what's going on with those folks. So uh, that's one of the things that's been my advantage getting into the safety training is a lot of the safety guys like the fact that if they look at me and they say, uh, the turntable, we have a problem with safety with the turntable because people, I know what the turntable is. You have to know the terminology. You got to know the nomenclature to get this right. Now, that's not to say there's a lot of generic safety programs that are very simple, but when you get into safety, slips, trips, and falls, yes, we have it in the office, but we also have it on a drilling site. We have it in a manufacturing facility, and each one is a little bit different, and you have different attributes that you've got to discuss and train about. That's so true. That's one of the things, well, that's one of the reasons that we at eLearning Brothers partnered with you, Troy, because we come to the table, we're making this, we're known for visually explosive learning, very interactive learning. We're known for making learning modules that make it easier for our customers to take them and, and edit them. But we need your experience in the partnership to bring the real life feet on the street and the experience in the field and, and making sure that the terminology and, and the cases we use are relevant and, and the scenarios. Well, and we got, uh, uh, Christy, we've got to look at it from a continual improvement process. I mean, you're never going to have it perfect on the front end and you'll never have it perfect on the tail end, but you've got to continue to make it better all along. And if you do that, you'll be successful. So why do companies, Troy, do safety training? What is their motivation? Well, you know, I was listening to some of the comments, compliance, uh, reduced costs, things, all, all those wonderful things. Yes, those are very true. The most important one to me is keep people from getting hurt. Then we got to look, if we do that, we are successful at that, then the ROI will automatically be there because for every dollar you spend on safety, you'll get a return of two to six dollars. I mean, so, okay, why am I doing this? Well, I got to do it because the law says I have to do it. Well, that's the wrong attitude to go in and with a safety program. The safety program should be, I care about my people. I want my people to be safety. I want, I want them to, go home in the evening to their families, you know, and then all those other things evolve from them. Part of that is the training. The training's got to be simple. It's got to be understandable. It's got to be not boring for, <laughs> I mean, because, you know, a lot of these courses, they got to take year in and year out every year. Now, some they can take every three years. That's the reason you need multiple sets. And that's one of the things I like about your all's model with my materials is that you're building it to where you can actually take a long course and make it modular, get some pieces, make it into micro learning. You can, then you can have the full learning and then you can have your incident training. If you have a close call or a near miss, you can actually go in there and pull that section out and do training on that, which might be, in the form of a, uh, you know, a CBT online or at a desktop or a handout or a, a toolbox meeting at the job site. 
So we had a question come up about the uh, ROI. People are interested in the the source of the ROI dollar figures that you mentioned. So for every dollar spent, you save. If you go to uh, Safety and Health magazine, uh, let me go here. Uh, the National Safety Council Safety and Health magazine. Uh, you can find they on their blog. They have various and numerous uh reports on you know or or uh articles on uh return on investment for safety and a lot of them are uh i wish i could give you the screen i don't know how to give you the screen i'm looking well, what we'll do what we'll do is uh if you can get a link of that to to chris or myself then we'll get that sent okay. out in the follow-up email so that you guys yeah. can have those yeah. sources basically you know right now one of the big things that uh, safety's headed in the wrong direction with the national safety council fatal fatalities have reached 5190 in 2016. that's the third consecutive annual increase now why is that happening well, what happened was when the economy went down, a lot of people ignored safety. Now the economy is coming back up and then all that, now we're paying the price for ignoring safety because of revenue, because we weren't training. We're, I mean, it's just common sense. And uh, I mean, if you look at the top five workplace fatalities as injury events, transportation is 40%. Violence is a new one, it's 17%. Now think about this, slips, trips, and falls is 16%. Now, that's a simple thing. I mean, you fall down, you break a leg. That, can ha that happens in the office, that happens on the job site. You know, so, you know, you look at this now, and the ROI, if you go out to the National uh, uh, Safety Council and look at some of their articles, they can explain that better than I can just off the cuff. But one of the things that I've I found an article out there which I thought was really remarkable, the average compliance cost per employees. Now this was a study done in 2008. And obviously prices have changed since 2008, they're higher. But all firms on an average paid $610 per person to be in compliance with safety training. Now that's not talking about uh, any return at all. That's your what they're saying your cost is. Now firms with fewer than 20 employees, they spend over $700. Then 200 to uh, 20 to 499, $650. Larger than 500 employees, they say you spend $500. That's your cost economics, the scale is working out there. But if you think about that, if you could reduce your costs by using prepackaged software that you could make site and work specific, and that's truly compliant training. The stuff you buy off the shelf to train with, that's a band-aid. That's not really training. What you're doing, you take these custom products, you go in there, and we have this job site. You might take lockout, tag out, and make it specific to several different pieces of equipment. And I have a lot of companies that do that because it makes more sense. Why should I teach lockout, tag out? I have my general, which is my core. Then I take from my general, I have branches, which go to this piece of equipment, this piece of equipment, this piece of equipment. Now I'm teaching the general to everybody so they're aware now I'm going to the specifics for each piece of equipment so people will know what they need to do if they have to lock and tag out that piece of equipment. It also goes back to the general, you know, you got qualified and unqualified. Unqualified takes the core, the qualified takes the core, plus they take the individual training. So, but it's up to you to take that generic customization area and go in and say, okay, I got to make it for this generator. Or I got to make it for this machine of some type, manufacturing device. And that's what a lot of folks do. And that's the best way of doing it. And it saves you a lot of money because you got 90% of the work done. Now you're, work, you're getting down to where you're drilling down to where you really have the problem. And the best thing I can tell people on the ROI is 
preview your loss runs. See what losses you're having. And I went through this with a company this morning. We went through their loss runs. I said, okay, we need to address this area, this area, and this area, because this is where we're, it's costing us money. This is where we're having problems. Now, once we looked at that, one of those areas, we decided we're going to have to make a totally custom course because it's specific to what they do and what they are. They're a foundation company. They do foundations out in uh, the oil patch and things like that. And I said, this is not, it, it's, mul it's multiple. We got slip strips and falls. We got pinch points. We got machine guards. We got all these things encompass this task. So what we're going to have to do is pull a little bit of all. Now our cores are giving a general understanding to a new hire. But when we get the new hire to that job site, we're going to give him additional training, but we got them all to the same level. This guy knows, everybody taking this advanced training knows what a pinch point is. I don't have to spend hours at going back through nomenclature. Do you know what a machine guard is? Do you know what a pinch point is? Do you know what this is? So then we could actually address the real problem rather than just like the Band-Aid. So we can have a uh, way of telling uh, uh, IS Network or PICS or Aventa that, hey, yeah, we got our training done. Here's our certificate. Well, that's not really training. That's just saying I'm doing it so I can go to work and get a job and, you know, make money. One, one of the things we talk about that e-learning is really, really good at is level setting as you mentioned, your audience before you get them on a hands-on situation, because a lot of safety training, right, they're going to have to, um, in fact, as part of the requirement, they have to be trained on that specific equipment. But if we can get that audience level set and pass an assessment and know where they are before they come to the hands-on training, um, that's the most costly and the most time-consuming portion of the training, right? Well, what happens is, I'll give you an example, and this is a little off the cuff on in terms of safety, but I had a company I was doing the safety training for online, and they, the engineer came to me and said, Troy, we do butterfly valves and all different types of valves in the oil patch. The problem I'm having, I'm having to teach people how to rebuild these valves. Well, uh, part of that is safety. but the second part was how to do that. Well, what would happen is you would have an experienced hand that would come in there that had done it before, and then you'd have non-experienced hands that would come in. Well, what would happen is you'd have a guy sitting around for a week being bored to death that you're paying until he, you got everybody up to the same level. So what he and I designed was safety, but we also went in there and did each type of valve. And we came up with an organization to where all those people would take this information online. And once they passed it, and then he would, they would come in a day early and all the new guys would take a test. And if they passed that test, they went in. If they didn't pass the test, they had to retrain again online. So then when they got in there, they reduced their training time from three weeks down to a week and four days or something like that. Well, how much money is that? That's a lot of money, but you also got better training because you have more interaction between the employees that were being trained. And that's one of the big problems out there. You, uh, with that Band-Aid training, people don't interact. They go in, oh, it's just another training course. I got to take it, wah, 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 wah. I'm done, you know? <laughs> But if you got people talking to one another and you got people communicating, then you go to the field and say someone, and you do a good job on your safety and you have hazard assessments out there and the guy's looking and he sees something that's wrong and he's trying to figure out what's wrong. Well, what it is, the man's using a pallet as a ladder, okay? You don't use a pallet as a ladder. So, that man walks over and stops the work or stops the job or stops that man from doing something unsafe. That's when we start being effective. And that's when you start seeing real change in the workplace. 
No, I've actually, and uh, I'll, I'll say this company name because I'm proud of National Oil Well Varco. I've actually seen the president of the company be called off a manufacturing floor by a worker because he didn't have his PPE on. That was powerful. And the, the CEO could thank him and went and got his PPE. So, you know, when you start seeing things like that happen, you know you got the culture going in the right direction. And that's part of it. And it all comes back to training, awareness, getting them to a certain point. And we got so many new hires coming in now. I mean, baby boomers like me are all dying off. I mean, we're just, you know, we actually don't want to work. We want to go fishing. But you'll sit there and, uh, you know, I, the millennials and folks like that, it's, we got to do a good job on these guys. If we don't, they will, we're just, well, it's might as well get a lot of body bags the way I look at it, <laughs> but it's the truth. I mean, you have to look at it that way. So let's, let's dig in, uh, uh, move on a little bit and dig in to specifically what is the customizable courseware that we're working on together and and talk to folks a little bit about how we're packaging this up and and uh how we're helping them deliver rockstar safety training so before we jump into that what is your biggest challenge out there uh, audience what is your biggest barrier to creating awesome safety training is it uh, knowledge of safety um budget, culture, time, or other? What, what are your issues that you're facing? Where do you have the most pain? That's, what That's a good, good way to put it. Where do you have the most pain? So the results are coming in. Go ahead and vote if you'd like to participate here. Um, the early leader here already is time. Time is a big barrier. Um, let's see. The rest are all almost neck and neck. So if you want to vote, be a part of this, we'll give you about five more seconds. And uh, all right, here we go. Here's those results. So 46% said time, 17% said budget, 17% said culture, 14% said safety knowledge. And we had quite a few others that came up. Um, language and translation is one difficult one. Mm. Uh, trying to translate it into a multiple language, and an unwillingness to let go of ILT. Ah. Uh, that's a big one out there. On the ILT scenario that you have out there, what you want to do is approach that from a blended training approach. Ease into, out of your ILT into a blended training where you're using uh, automatic CBTs, things along those lines, instructor led like, uh, like that. That'll help you a lot on that. Uh, I have a number of companies that they have the online training for a particular issue, but they still do instructor led training. So we figured out a way to where they can actually go in and take their testing online after they have their instructor led training course. Well, now we got all the information and all the data going into a single database and they can actually issue certificates and they got permanent records of those. They're not, they're not keeping file cabinets full of, uh, you know, paper and things along those lines. Time is a big issue and I understand that. And that's really the approach we're taking. We're going to save you time. We're going to save you money. We're going to give you a head start on the safety knowledge. Now, that's not to say now, within your organization, you've got to get with your subject matter expert or whoever's in charge of your safety there, because safety for generically is not safety for compliance, in my opinion. To truly be compliant, you have to be work and site specific. Now, if you're a contractor company and you're working for an operator, so you're we're a contractor, a, rig, a wireline company. Now I talk about the oil patch a lot because that's, that's my bread and butter. That's where I'm at. And that wireline company wants to do a job for Chevron. Well, Chevron's going to look at a couple of things on that wireline company. First thing they're going to do, they're going to look at all your insurance. They're going to look at your ERM. They're going to see what your, your ERM score is. 
then they're going to go in there and say, okay, do you have all your safety done, training done? Yes or no? Well, do you report to IS Network or do you report to PICS or, you know, where they can go in and actually look at those training records? So, that and that's part of the culture because right now a lot of folks can't get a job or they can't get contracts unless they have all these ducks in a row. So now that, that's not for everybody. I mean, one of the things that I tell folks is uh, you gotta understand the oil patch is a little bit different than the rest of the world. They are highly scrutinized by the EPA, by OSHA and all these different, and they're the biggest players on the block. They got lots of money. Anybody with deep pockets, they're gonna try and get out. I mean, I've got oil hauling companies that haul, or pipeline companies that haul oil. Well, if they have a accident, one, one of those 18 wheel, uh, wheelers, even if it's not their fault and there was nobody injured, it's going to cost them a million dollars. That's with having everything done right with the mitigation. Now, if they've done it's their fault. It's going to cost them a whole lot more, but they still need everything done right to mitigate the losses. If they can go in there and convince the judge and the jury, or however it works, what state you're in, that, hey, we did everything right. This was just an accident. We didn't do it on purpose. But still, you're still going to pay a lot of money. So, you know, the biggest things that we can do for you with the products that we're trying to develop and are developing is reduce, save you tons of time, reduce your cost, and it'll improve your culture because you got a better looking product out there and everything. We got a, a head start on the safety knowledge for you. So, but that doesn't mean that you've got to stop learning. You have to learn too. I had a meeting, uh, call, well, telephone meeting with a lady up in Minnesota yesterday. She's been hired to do a safety program for a company that's going to do wind turbines. So I'm directing her all these different places before I would even sell her anything. I said, you need to get your this written. You got to get this done. You got to get, and I told with her the whole list. And then I gave her links to where to go get that information. I said, now, when you get this part done, then call me back because you'll know what you need. I can't sell you what I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just that simple. So that's the whole idea is to save you money. And a lot of you folks out there, if you're developers, this, that, and the other for companies, whether you're an independent developer, you're still going to have to talk to the safety person within the company you're selling the product to. So yeah, the, the customizable courseware. Thanks, Troy, because that's, that's, I couldn't ask for a better segue into what we're working on here together is, is the customizable courseware specifically for safety training and, and Troy is our uh, subject matter expert here. That the training that we're using as the basis for the eLearning Brothers courses uh, come from his catalog and his experience. Um, we developed them then in the three most popular eLearning tools. Um, we are, will be developing classroom guides and slides. So as Troy mentioned, uh, using them for blended learning. Um, remember that you can ease your uh, uh, your workforce into e-learning by splitting these modularized courses up into take this segment independently then we're going to hop on a webinar together and use a portion of the equivalent instructor led and go through that together or we're going to come together in the classroom and all be level set on this certain material the pre-material and then we're going to get hands-on with you so um, that's a great way to do a transition um, it's a great way to show um, how, you know, as I mentioned again earlier, the classroom is your most costly and most valuable time in training, the face-to-face. -face. You have to take people away from their job. They have to travel to the training. They have, you know, they're, they're going to be taking time away from their desk. They can't even pretend to multitask. And you're paying the instructor and, 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 and the other folks that, that are there in the room. So you want to use that time specifically for what is required for hands-on training and everything else that you can vet out that is awareness level, knowledge level, uh, theory, 
you want to get that out and as much as possible drive that to e-learning because that way folks can take their time and revisit the material and actually use e-learning for what it's really good at and then turn around and use the classroom for what the classroom is really good at. We always so, called it the minutia of OSHA. The minutia of OSHA, that's a good way to put it. And, and you know, that's exactly right. And, and that's what you got to do. You get let let e-learning and these tools take care of the stuff you got to do year in and year out repeatedly. Then that frees you up the focus on what's really important your uh, uh, custom training, which is you're drilling down to the site and work specific training. Yep, yep. And your specific work site policies, your, your specific exactly. work site guides and, and things that, uh, the reports and things that need to be, to be filled out. You can link to all of those and create a site that has everything in one place for everybody to eliminate excuses, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so the classroom materials we develop, uh, there's a facilitator guide, a participant workbook, those are in Microsoft Word, PowerPoint slides, uh, printable job aid uh, and or safety poster is included uh, with the materials. And we create that in PowerPoint. So you can even update the job aid or poster. And then the quiz comes in the e-learning format. Um, in the e-learning, we develop it, as I said, in the three most popular tools we develop in Captivate, Lectora, and Articulate Storyline, and new to our safety training because it's so important for your compliance, your internal safety and compliance reviewers. We're giving you a transcript of all of the course text in Microsoft Word. So when you give those to your compliance team, they can review with a screenshot of every screen in the course, they can go through and review and review the text in the notes. And then they can use the tools in Microsoft Word and track changes. So if you have to send it around, when I worked with uh, companies like Hewlett Packard in the past, we would send it around and there'd be a legal person, there'd be a compliance safety person, there'd be an HR person, um, there would be a subject matter person from the business. And when they were all working on the task force for this title, they would pass the transcript around amongst them and use the track changes and mark them up. So when we develop this e-learning here, we're assuming you're going to use it in that same way and we're gonna enable that for you. So this, uh, uh, as Troy mentioned, we, we take a very modular approach to the training. When you look at our safety customizable courseware, you're going to see the objectives for each course and you're going to find a lesson packed into a module specifically around that objective. So if you wanna deliver micro learning, you can pull out that objective. If you know you've had an incident in a certain area uh, or you've witnessed something, a near miss on the job, you can go back and pull out that particular area and when you're doing a, a, a team meeting or, or a group refresher, just you know, kind of bang the pipe on that little leaky spot there and, and uh, uh, give a little bit of a refresher and a reminder. I think a, a really important part of safety, and I'm, I'm reading in the, in the literature and, the, and what I'm seeing out there is that people become complacent. They do the same job every day, in and out. Um, they forget that what they're working with. They forget that a forklift is is a, a hugely heavy piece of equipment that if it rolls over on them uh, and they try to jump out of the way and don't make it, they're, they're going to get severely injured or worse. And uh, they forget if, if their coworker, uh, they're not paying attention and they're turning and their coworker gets behind, crushed behind that equipment. Um, Troy talks about the ripple effects. It's not just that coworker, it's, it's their entire family and it can be for generations. So sometimes that little reminder is just a very little bit of time that's taken out of the day and it makes such a huge, huge difference. And we think about that as we're building these courses together, that's driving everything we're doing here. And you got to realize also the fact that these are modular. It means that you can take them and add things that are specific to your company within that module. 
So now we're we're getting people. You you put pictures of your own people. You put pictures of your work environment. Okay, I have got courses out there where companies have taken them for several years and made them their own. You can't even tell when they're mine anymore because they they've taken them. Okay, I we're going to put Joe in here this year. Okay. There's nothing worse than seeing a training program with a hot hairstyle and a car from 1965 in it, for God's sake. So, you know, it's got to be up to date. And now, uh, especially with these young people, because they 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 point it out. They'll sit there, look at that, look at that. You know, how stupid that looks, you know. Boy, they look really strange back then. But the thing is, that detracts from the training. So... We want you want to keep them up to snuff in terms of look, feel, and current times. I mean, you know, uh, if you don't, then they'll that goes back to losing interest, Chris. They they say, well, shoot, it's the same stuff. Every year you could take these modules and make them a little bit different, change the color scheme, change the background, do something to them. That way, when they hit it, it's different than what they saw last year. So that's a trigger for them to pay more attention. And that's what you need to do. Exactly. That's exactly right. So now let's take a little sneak peek here and, and take a look at, at the courses that we're offering. When we say we're doing safety training, we actually are uh, working on a total of uh, well, we have a we have a we have a very large number of, of courses that we're going to be working on, and we we are going to be wanting feedback from you, the audience, uh, and our customers on which courses we should be doing next. Um, the ones that we have on our immediate radar and currently in production. Um, the first five on the left will be the first release, but the ones you see on your screen. Uh, uh, scaffolds has come. Uh, somebody, I believe, mentioned back safety, uh, lockout, tagout. These are all um, currently on, on the roster for production for our first um, um, for our first release. And the ones on the far left will be uh, the ones that are uh, immediately in production right now. As in, uh, uh, storyboards are actually being have been developed, and or the courses will be available shortly. Um, slips, trips and falls, fire prevention, stairways and ladders, machine guards, and forklift safety. And I've asked Troy to, uh, I have a slide for each one of these, and I've asked Troy to kind of speak to the business case and the business value um, behind each one of these titles. So we'll kind of jump into that right now, starting with our first title, uh, Slips, Trips and Falls. We were quite surprised because it's, it's easy to kind of make light of slips, trips and falls because you know well heck we all we all trip we all slip what we didn't really think about was that in some of these work site situations um, some people are working at height some people are working around hazardous machinery other things um, sometimes a simple trip or a slip isn't uh, it's no joke right well the average cost of a slip injury is about forty two thousand dollars okay so and Back at the beginning of the uh, this conversation, we're talking about 17% of the injuries being from slips, strips, and fall. Now, if you look at it, we spend about a billion dollars a week on injuries. 17% of that right now would be slips, strips, and falls based on the numbers that we've been given. So that's, uh, what, $170 million a week? That's a lot of money. So you got to train people. Now, it's as simple as this. In your office, somebody spills coffee. Everybody's too lazy to clean up the coffee. They walk over the coffee. Okay. Then somebody doesn't pay attention and they got the wrong shoes on. They hit that coffee. They fall. They bust their tailbone. It costs $42,000. It's as simple as that. Now, I was at a meeting yesterday at a very large oil company, and the lady in charge of HS&E plugged in her computer behind her. Well, the next safety guy walked in and said, you can't do that. We need to move this. That's 
the type of awareness you need to have. Cause they, he made her move to where it was less likely for someone to trip over that cord. And I noticed things like that because I'm in safety. I, I notice all that stuff. I'm nuts about that, you know? So you see things like that and you've got to train people to understand that this is what to do. This is, and then on ladders, why do we have ladders in there? Stairs and ladders. Well, that's where you have a lot of slips, trips and falls. So, and, but you want to get deeper because we'll have courses later that'll be just ladder and just scaffold and just that equipment. But you gotta understand all this is a broad stroke on the front end. You gotta figure where is it happening, how to make avoid it, and how to teach people to be hazard aware and recognize the hazards and change the hazards and not be afraid of changing the hazard. Now that's one of the biggest pushes right now by OSHA is hazard assessment and hazard understanding and how what to do with them. So fire prevention and safety, um, this is uh, the next title that we're working on. And, and um, we, start, we start each of our courses with something we call the attention getter. Usually we involve some form of, of statistics or uh, uh, some sort of background awareness that you might not be thinking of. But the whole point of the attention getter is, hey, what's in it for me? Why would I take this exactly. course? What is at stake here? Um, and what so do I training. need to get out of the training? Right, exactly. But why why is this important to you? And what, what do you need to get out of it? And how do you keep yourself and your coworkers safe, right? So that you can go home at the end of the day and and uh, do the things that you want to do and, and take pleasure from in life, well, right? And using these for the blended training approach as well as the as the uh, instructor led as well as the CBT or uh, LMS training, you could ask questions and interact with people. And at the same time, by having the questions for these programs, you'll understand which questions are important. How do I need to modify these questions to fit my world and my employees' world? Okay. Evacuation procedures right here. That catches my eye. Why? Because a generic program will not give you your evacuation procedures for a facility. Okay, first thing that happened in the meeting yesterday morning, the lady walks me over, shows me the emergency exit, showed me how to walk, what the alarm sounded like, the whole nine yards. Now, how many people do that at an office when someone comes to visit? Not very many. So what you have to do is make a section with your evacuation procedures. Okay, this building. Now you may have several buildings. You may have a whole campus. So you have different things like the muster point. So I, I just want you all to understand that when you get these, we got you a good head start, but you got to take it and finish out. We built the frame of the house. We got everything, all the rooms, everything in there. You got to finish it out to make it a nice house. Otherwise it's going to get just fall down on you. No, <laughs> So, right. So in this course in particular, we say your organization should have posted your uh, evacuation procedure. Make sure you know where that is and then follow the policy within your course and, and I'm sorry, within your organization and make your way to the approved. Um, and on that particular yeah. slide, you put a picture of the evacuation. Or you can or put a link. link. You can or put a link, link right or in the course exactly. because uh, if you care to, because we are giving you the source code, you can put a link to the course or you can deliver the course with a uh, supplement, a supplemental site or, or links uh, or a PDF uh, along with the job aid. So because you have the source, you have the ability to tie this training right in with your full compliance program. It's not a one and done. It's part of your safety training program you're, and your you're, safety you're, culture, right? You're, make, you're making it your own. That's, so, yeah, that's so stairways and ladders, um, safety requirements for stairways, safety requirements for ladders and work practices for using ladders safety, safely. 
Now that falls into your falls and slips scenario again. So we're back to 43 grand. It doesn't matter if you fall on this ladder or you fall out of a chair. If you have the problem, it could cost you this much money. Now, again, a lot of folks that work in offices and I, I'm a realist. Okay, the odds on something bad happening in the office, so you're probably more likely to get struck by lightning. You're more likely to be struck by lightning to get an OSHA inspection, okay? But let me tell you this, if you got more than 25 employees and you have a fatality or you have a major accident, you're gonna have an inspection because that's gonna trigger, just like the IRS, where's the flag at, where's the flag? And that would trigger a flag that would, uh, now that's if, uh, obviously if you do your reporting, <laughs> but the point is you've got to be careful on what you're doing all the time and stairways and ladders. And okay, if you look at this, stairways and ladders in the office is different than stairways and ladders on a tugboat, okay? Or a construction site. Or a construction site or a rig or, you know, so you got to, again, you've got to make it work in site specific. We're covering the core of what you need to know at a minimum to be in compliance for general awareness. You have to take this thing and master it down to where it works for you and your work, and then you'll be successful. Right. Right. So the general slips, trips and falls course, I would say that's a course for every every work environment. That's a course for everybody. Um, this specific stairways and ladders, perhaps the maintenance crew, if you're a very large organization or if you're in certainly if you're in construction, if you're going through a major remodel of your of your organization and there's a work site. Uh, or, or building site there on premise, you might you might definitely be more interested in making sure that uh, things are happening in a compliant way. So those rules and regulations are all covered in in the stairways and ladders course. Well, in each fatality here, we're talking about 36 fatalities. That cost about one and a half million dollars a piece. That's a chunk of change, especially for a small company. If you got a if you got a profit margin of twenty percent, how much do you have to sell to make up that loss? Quite a bit. So uh, here we we have the uh, machine guards course. Of uh, of course, this one's going to be uh, mostly for in, in a manufacturing uh, site or or anywhere that where they're using uh, heavy equipment at the work site, right? Mm -hmm. This is uh, basically where you, uh, now machine guards, you can look at it from the standpoint of just a standard saw, a table saw. You have a machine guard on a table saw, but you also have a machine guard on a manufacturing or even a pump on a drilling rig. So where the belts are and things along those lines. So people, things won't get caught and, uh, you know, uh, arms won't get caught, uh, Loose clothing won't get caught. I mean, a lot of different things. Machine guards protect you a number of different ways. Again, this goes back to if you're a company that doesn't have a lot of equipment that has machine guards, you may not need this program. But if you're in the heavy industry, you're in manufacturing, you're in construction, things along those lines, you will need this course because they're prevalent out there on your job site and on your equipment. This is like, uh, these are called pinch points and impact caught between injuries, okay? That way people are aware of, if you got a new person out there working, he does not know not to stick his hand inside of something. That machine guard is there for a reason and that should at least slow him down to where he doesn't do a major, uh, you, you have a major problem. So uh, it goes back again to common sense and making them aware, uh, awareness on the training. So, right, so when we, when we were working on this course, one of the things we did, one of the modules in the beginning that applies to anybody working around equipment, you see that um, 
objective that talks about movements that create mechanical hazards. What we talk about is that, that there's different kinds of, of movements that equipment has, and we raise awareness of the fact of you see something that has an oscillating movement, or you see something that has a belt, that that is a hazard, that's a hazard area. And then how can it hurt you? Well, it can cut you, it can pinch you. Pinch points is a big, is a big point. Anything where two things come together, you can, you can get things smashed, you can get things cut. And, and that's where we start the course with. So if you were going to use that modularly, that might be something that you would want to take out and make sure everybody is aware of, that they, they have that level of awareness. And when you get into the ways machines are safeguarded, that wouldn't necessarily be that's something that's for everybody. And, that, right? and that's where you'd want to put pictures of your equipment. Yes, exactly. And showing exactly. what you're doing and what's going on there. Uh, machine guarding has been consistently one of the most uh, cited OSHA violations because people always take the guard off a machine. They defeat them. They yes. defeat it. They go in there and they work it, and they're oh, I got to work. I I got I I consistently have to work on this machine. I'm just going to leave that guard off, and that's what happens. So that's why um and this and I pulled the uh, image that you see on the screen here because that's from our our both our job aid and and the retention getter for this particular course is is telling folks look. If you were if you were in a boxer in the ring, which was this came from Troy's original material. If you were a boxer in a ring and somebody's tried to punch you, would you just stand there and take it? Well, no, of course not. You'd put your guard up, right? So this course teaches folks to keep their guard up. And then the uh, fifth one that we're working on right now is uh, the forklift safety course, and we talked a little bit about about forklifts. Um, I know in working this, I was surprised as an instructional designer to learn that driving a forklift is not at all like driving a car, and it is a piece of heavy equipment, and a lot of people become very seriously injured around or using forklifts every year. Well, a lot of folks say, uh, well, and that's one of the reasons, and again, it's one of the most cited violations, and that's the reason we have forklift certified training now. For years we didn't have that, but now you have to be trained. You have to do classroom training. Then you've got to do hands-on training. You have to know how to inspect that forklift. You got to know how to drive that forklift, and it's a specific forklift that you will be That's driving. Right. If something happens, they change forklifts. You got to start all over, because just because you know how to drive one forklift doesn't mean you know how to drive. The swearing radius may be different. There's may be variables on that forklift that you don't know. Is it a gasoline or is it a propane? You know, so there's a lot of different variables on a forklift. And on the uh, inspection is so important on a forklift. If you can have a brand new forklift and it can get a leak in the hydraulics and all of a sudden you got a real problem out there. Uh, in terms, and also the foolishness that people do on forklifts will drive you nuts. Uh, I mean, stupidity at its peak is on a forklift. I mean, <laughs> I've seen some crazy stuff. So. Yeah, we 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 have a we actually do. It says no horseplay, and it says the forklift is not a taxi. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, I could ride on the, the forks. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, you lift me up on a fork and I'll get this off the top shelf. You know, stuff like that. I mean, you don't do things like that and they gotta be aware of it and you gotta stop the work. And that's one of the programs that we will be building for this group is to stop the work because that is real so important out here. If someone sees something wrong in any, and stop the work, it will be mentioned every one of these programs. Why? Because you need to stop it. If something's going wrong, if you're doing something wrong, stop it. Don't and don't be bashful. If a person gets fired for stopping a job that's unsafe, I hope he sues the company that he's working for for every dime they got because he's doing the right thing and they're doing the wrong thing. So that's the end of our uh, prepared material here. But with Troy here, I'd like to open up questions. If anybody in our audience has any questions specifically for Troy, um, we will be doing some things in the future. Um, 
Hopefully we'll be able to get Troy back here and talk specifically as we release some other courses. We're going to be um, including some of his blogs, uh, posts in, in the eLearning Brothers blog. And uh, if you have questions or anything you'd like to see regarding safety, please let us know. But right now, Andrew, do you have any questions coming in? We have lots of questions, none for Troy particularly. Most of them are about the courseware cost, where it's posted, things like that. Um, people want to know the cost of the package and when the safety courses will be completed and available. So the, the first five titles that uh, we showed, we're actually launching in Storyline first and they're actually going online, so they are available. I will direct the questions to cost, uh, regarding cost and, and, and et cetera, because we have different ways of licensing. Two customizable coursewares come with uh, our subscription. Um, our, with the ELB uh, Master Suite, yes. The so the ELB Master, Master Suite. Suite, if you already subscribe to that um, then and you haven't picked what two courses you want to do, uh, you can pick the safety courses, uh, two safety courses to be included there. You can also buy them on their own. Um, just give us a call and we can talk about pricing. Like Chris said, I mean, it really depends on what you want, what you need, and we can get you different pricing uh, to best fit your needs. Um, but again, if you are already a member of the, and you have the ELB Master Pack, they are, two of them are included, and then you can add those um, as you like. But Going back to these ones, there's lots of questions about certain safety topics and they want to know if you're going to be adding these, Chris. So, for example, um, are you going to be adding uh, construction area office safety? Are you going to be added, adding chemical use safety um, and, and other, other courses? What, what ones can we see, can we expect to have in the future? So the um, let me see if I can go back to see, one the, of the one of the things that we did was the list of courses that they're currently working on are courses from the field. In other words, they were requested courses by actual clients. So you know uh, these courses are the ones that people train and use every day. So I think you'll find that once the entire list comes out you'll be more than satisfied. It will probably cover more than 90% of what your training needs will be in terms of compliance on the front end. There'll be specific ones that'll be uh, like journey management. Not every company needs journey management, but some companies do. So you'll see different things that float in and float out. And those are things where you need to, you as a client need to tell eLearning Brothers that, hey, this is something we want and we need. And that's the way I've always built courses. I never built them because uh, I thought I needed the biggest catalog. I built them because somebody would actually buy them. I mean, it didn't so make any have, sense. You know? We have um, right now up to 70 titles that, that we have that we're digging into right now. Um, these were picked as the top titles that um, through Troy's experience are most often downloaded and, and requested from his catalog. They also include a large number of the topics that are most cited by OSHA for violation. Um, we have a number of other uh, topics that we kind of have in the next level that we're interested in. But what I've instructed our sales uh, consultants to do is please get back to me as the product manager and let me know what you, our customers, are really looking at. If you, uh, out in your audience right now, if somebody's looking at, hey, we're looking to develop a custom course in this particular area, or we need to beef up our safety in this other area, please let one of our sales consultants know they'll get back to me and we can work with you on that because if, if we can move one up in production because we have an actual customer asking for it, I have the power to move that up in production and I will do that for you. So let, let, let's talk, definitely. You had mentioned OSHA. There's a question here. Does this program meet the OSHA online authorized training requirements? Uh, yes, they do. Now, you got to understand something when you're looking at the, the OSHA online training requirement. There's a few issues that are in there. You got to have the testing. 
the testing, Scott, uh, to be a, like a randomized quiz where you have randomized questions and randomized answers. You also need the ability for that individual to contact somebody within the organization. And this is a, a function of the LMS more so than the course. They have to have the ability to talk to someone if they have a question. And if you get all those things covered in within your LMS, you'll be fine. Now I use, uh, I'm, a, I'm SAP certified. I've worked with a lot of different companies, a lot of different LMSs. And that's part of what, okay, do you have a chat room here? <laughs> can you talk to this person? Do they have someone they can go to to find out if they have a question or they don't understand something? Those are the issues that need to be covered on that. Now, uh, Chris, I'll get you a link to the OSHA letter for online training. That way you can share that with folks. And uh, if anybody asks, they can just click on that link and download the uh, letter from OSHA that talks about online and CBT training, and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. But right. a lot of it is the functionality of the LMS, not the core. The and, course and is also, general keep, awareness. I'm sorry, I just, we're running out of time. I just tried to get it in. Uh, keeping in mind that some standards specifically call for hands-on oh, training when dealing with the equipment so it's not a matter of whether e-learning brothers e-learning is compliant or somebody else's e-learning is compliant um, this is the theory and the awareness level of this learning and then it needs to be picked up and carried through for the hands-on portion and that that will be right in the standard and very often that requirement is written right into our course. If there is a hand-on component, we call that right, right out good, in the e-learning. A good example of that's forklift. Exactly. If you do the classroom training, then you got to take the person out there. They got to be trained on that particular forklift they're working on, the area that they're driving, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then that's signed off on. Right. Another one is HASWAP or eight hour. Okay, you got to have, after you do the HASWAP or eight hour, you got to have fit testing, of a respirator and first aid and CPR. So those have to be documented separately above and beyond what you do on the online training. Now, the LMS usually or the CBT has the, the ability to document that in there and you can upload a PDF showing where you got it done or whatever, then you got it all So we are we are well over time now. We're not yeah. gonna take any more questions. Um, but we'll try to get a, a lot of information put together for you and send out in the email later today. Um, Chris, do you have a slide for me? I do. I'm so sorry. Let so me... there's lots of conversation, lots of questions and uh, comments about pricing. Um, and pricing really just depends on how many courses you need. We offer bundle discounts. We offer uh, some uh if you just want to tack on another course, we can give you discounts there. The best way is to just give us a call, 801-796-2767. Talk with a the sales executive. They're happy to uh, find the best package to meet your needs. You can also send an email to info at elearningbrothers.com. We can uh, connect you with a quote that way. If you want to see more of customizable courseware, come to ELBX. You can learn more about that at elearningbrothers.com. That's coming up on June 11th. We're going to be showing a lot of customizable courseware. We're going to give you a lot of tips on how to develop, how to uh, design. I mean, it's going to be a great conference, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of great people there like uh, Dr. Allen, uh, Dr. Carl Kopp. We've got uh, Mike Ruska coming to talk about XAPI. It's going to be, it's going to be a blast. So uh, come to ELBX. Take a look at customizable courseware, schedule a demo. Um, there's lots of stuff to do. Just visit elearningbrothers.com. Thank you, Troy and Chris, for joining us in today's webinar. And uh, we don't want to take much of your time more. So we'll let you guys go. Thanks a lot. See ya. Thanks. Bye.